I am the captain now. Last time on SLV in Spain, we headed up the coast to take shelter from the Tramontane winds that were about to blast us from the north. We bunkered down in a magical spot called Puerto de Cadaquis. I'm gonna go free dot well I'm gonna go spear fishing over there, but I'm in Europe, there's not that many fish. So what I say is I'm gonna go free diving with my gun and then I don't get disappointed. With my gun. With your gun. I'm going over there where that flag is. There's a bit of a drop off on the other side and the wind's going that way, so there's not much swell in that little place there. I've heard there's groper, but we'll see what happens. How's the stainless looking? Well, I'm nearly finished. I want to know if that stuff's good or not. And I also want to know, do you leave a little bit of goo, like slime on there when you're finished to stop it from uh, rusting in the future? Like as a bit of a protection? Or do you wipe it all off? If you wipe it all off, it looks beautiful, but yeah, I don't know. Another one of those 5 a.m. starts. Uh, we have just dropped the mooring line and we are motoring out of the bay just to get away from the little mooring walls and we're going to hoist the main. We are going to the Grand Mott today. I forget how many nautical miles it is, but we're going to try and do it in a day with no wind. So, yeah, <laughs> delicious luck. Last hoist of the mani. Rouse has just gone back to bed. Uh, we are going. Oh, I need to stop yawning. It's ridiculous. We are going five knots into an eight knot breeze, um, which isn't too bad, but I think. It's going to die off even more and we'll probably put the code zero up when Riley wakes up, which I'm betting won't be too long. Being on our way back to where our new journey had begun only a few months ago, it was good to finally feel like a new La Vagabond. We had learned what all the new sounds mean, how the new systems work and how to deal with the sails as a team quickly and efficiently. She's a very beautiful boat and we're all pretty much still in awe. Hell yeah, the wind's just picked up. We've got 11 knots of true and now we're going 6.7. So things are starting to move now, folks. What can I do? We 
an exit. I want to get there before the sun goes down. Um, we've gone far enough east. I think I'm going to have to motor directly on course for an hour or two whilst the wind changes direction. Hopefully it's tip two. And then it should swing around to here. Then I'll hoist the main again and we'll sail off again. I'd obviously prefer to sail the whole way, but... We're on a tight schedule. With the tramontane and uh, the booking in and stuff, we've just got to get there, so... And I'm just making lunch in the kitchen after sleeping most of the morning. Uh, we're having burritos today. How many, how many sails have you rolled in and out today? I've put up and down the code D twice. Sorry, the code zero, and I'll put the code D up once. I'll put the main up twice, and I've rolled the head sail in three times. <laughs> and it's quarter past three. Yeah. We just Little reached... <laughs> <laughs> we just got our top speed on the Vagabond. We got... We got an 11.9. We got an 11.9. Hammering the Vagabonds. I was nearly going to title this episode Motoring the Vagabond because I didn't think we were going to get to sail very much. And here we are. We're flying along. Oh, 12.9. What? Yeah. Holy crap. Holy, Holy crap. crap. <laughs> Perfect conditions, Tim. Yep. I can work at 13 knots. I never thought that would be possible. Yeah, actually, I didn't think about that. That's no. crazy. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've got to pay attention. I'm, I've got my eye on the apparent wind speed. If that picks up to more than 15 knots, I just go downwind a little bit, which will reduce that. And we'll go just slightly off course, which is fine when you're doing 12 knots. And then uh, as it drops down a bit, we, come, we point a little bit higher and the wind picks up and... Yeah, that's the game we're playing at the moment. Now I'm sitting on the toilet, but I'm not really on the toilet. I needed to show you the view from here. Seriously, it feels like I'm going a million miles an hour. So I've got the autopilot on performance level four, which I never used to really use on the old boat because it would suck power, but look at how fast and how accurate it is. This is the rudder here. And that's, I think that's degrees plus and minus. And it just, when you feel a wave come and pick you up, you feel a wave come behind you like this. And I, I'm sitting here going, oh, well, I'd steer into it and then back down here. And before I can even think about it, this thing, look at that. It's gone to 10 and then back to normal and then minus two and then back again. It's just, no one could steer as good as this thing. Yeah, it's alright. Wow. Oh, what it does it. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's on a hinge. Be careful. Oh my god. That's scary. Guess who it is? It's Bloody Matthew on the drone again! <laughs> <laughs> it's behind the sail now. Aww, we've missed you too, Matthew. Hey Mathieu, 
<laughs> I absolutely hated that. Holy crap. Whew. Took me four attempts to be able to get into this little place. And I hope never to have to do it again. <laughs> a mess. I bashed the boat on the pillars, but they got rubber around them, so I don't think there's any damage, but. No first scars. Oh dear. Sorry. And they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> But I did it. Wow, so we didn't put a second line over this side and uh, Daniel has just, what do you call that? Where lassoed. You lassoed it. But just not over the whole the pillar. But I think, I, that, <laughs> I think that would be okay though. Might be, yeah. Yeah, if you're tying it down, then it can't lift up. If Maybe it's it super tight. Yay. I think I'll stretch the rigging on the right hand side. I'm not so sure about the left. Get the left neck will need some. So I just thought I should explain why it took me like three goes to get into our berth and it was less of a mistake and more of a panic attack sort of thing I guess but you know I'm going to show you anyway. So here's all the boats, all the ultramers nearby and the wind was coming from this direction at about what, what was it like 15 knots or something um, and so when I, when I came in what I was doing was I was heading into the wind like this and reversing back in but by the time I got to here got in between the pillars, the wind had already grabbed my nose and like swung me around so I had to attempt it three times and I didn't stop and think about what I was doing because I remembered JP who gave us sailing lessons before we left, um, we had no wind during these few days so this is the way he taught us and then I thought again later and I did remember that he said in stronger winds you have to put your butt to the wind because this is where you have most control and it's common sense really because both of the propellers are at the back. So what I should have done, and I did in the end after Matthew was yelling and screaming at me <laughs> from the dock, um, is yeah, I turned my butt to the wind and I reversed all the way back. Uh, and then I used this pillar as sort of like my pivot point kind of thing. Uh, and I was able to put my port side uh, back to the pillar and then bring the starboard side engine all the way back and my nose just turned around and I was able to come straight back in and it was so easy like I got it straight away so yeah that is what happened we picked Machu's brain about a few things and as the sun set we regaled him with tales of our exploits in the western Mediterranean sea level and it's running smoother up there yep. so usually that's when you want some twist in your sails Who is it this week? It is Grant Strawn. We're inviting 10 patrons on board. Grant Strawn, you're the next one, mate. Congratulations. Uh, luckily, I called your name out because Elena was going to call you Grant Strachan. <laughs> so, hey, leave me send alone. us an email at sailingwithagabond at gmail.com. And um, yeah, we'd love to get you on board. We want to try and meet as many of you people as possible. This boat's amazing. We want to get you on here and to experience what it is that we're doing. So, really looking forward to seeing you, mate.